What were your thoughts on Hackley? Uh, it was a crazy place there that, that whole evening. Uh, interesting stuff happening. Some really good stuff on the spirit box later that night. And doing uh, the camera upstairs with the night vision was really interesting. After finding an evidence review, the... Uh, you know, what we picked up there uh, regarding uh, that EVP and having Troy with me that night too and he yeah. was operating the uh, uh, EMF meter and it was really cool, you know, hearing that, uh, it was, you know, I, I'm speechless to say what it else was. Well, what are your thoughts in general on the spirit box, ghost box? Uh, I think it depends on the operator who uses it. I think uh, a lot of times it's it gets kind of a bad rap from a lot of people in the paranormal community. It is an IC uh, or an ITC uh, device used for spirit communications, and I know it's controversial, but it, yet it it offers some good opportunities. Mm. That's why I like to use the Faraday cage with it. What is the Faraday cage? Basically, it's blocking electromagnetics from entering that uh, confined space inside that box or however you have it configured the cage or whatever so a radio inside technically should not work yeah so it's basically blocking the frequencies yeah you're blocking the radio waves okay yeah or getting it down to almost a minimum that can barely hear it okay uh, Coleman you, you didn't get the, the tent so we'll skip that one and go directly to uh, O'Keefe. What are your thoughts on, on O'Keefe? Uh, I really liked it. It was an elegant uh, mansion. Uh, you know, the house part was really impressive. I enjoyed, you know, seeing everything from the fine china to the old furniture and stuff in there and how well it's been maintained. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, on the paranormal side, it was really cool. Uh, Hearing different sounds when we went in there in the evening part, uh, I heard all sorts of you know strange noises, people walking, or mm. sounds like footsteps walking down the corridor uh, upstairs hallway, and of course I had a personal experience. Telling me a little bit more about your personal experience. Uh, well, the personal experience. Well, I was down at the end of the hallway. It's a T-section hallway at the end and uh, it was in the master bedroom area and I heard somebody like somebody walking down uh, the hallway itself and then all of a sudden I saw this head appear and uh, basically kind of like this peeking through and it was very translucent and it was the lady in white uh, I, I believe it would be um, Mr. O'Keefe's second wife and uh, very translucent looking. I could tell it was a female and uh, we stared at each other briefly, maybe about two, three seconds and she popped out, just phased out. And I thought that was really cool, hmm. having that experience there. And of course the EVP that I picked up there as well was really interesting after an evidence review. Uh, I was in the nursery and uh, basically I was with another fellow, uh, he actually is a volunteer of the ranch there and we were calling out for the son, uh, Saber, and... Uh, Faber. What, is it Faber? It's Faber. Also, yeah. sorry, Faber. <laughs> anyway, uh, was calling out for this little boy and uh, soon after this lady's voice comes through that says, I love you. Hmm. And you have that as a clear uh, class A or class B EVP? I'd say it probably goes in a B class. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you could hear it pretty good when you wear headphones, uh, you know, on the computer. But uh, yeah, it's definitely you could tell it was, uh, you know, a voice saying "love you." So cool. I thought it was really interesting. I think it's a residual type of uh, EVP. What are your thoughts on the Richmond Tunnel? Richmond Tunnel. Uh, it's very fascinating, uh, considering that, you know, there's probably been a lot of deaths occur due to motor vehicle accidents and people getting run over by vehicles. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's, it's a corridor, you know, the tunnel and then the Richmond Street itself for a lot of paranormal activity and transit. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it warrants further investigation. 
I think we'll get a lot more out of it if we keep going back in different areas on Richmond Street right down to the old BC Penitentiary area. Yeah. We'll think. Uh, how long have you been with me now? It's going to be about 10 months. Yeah, almost a year. Yeah, almost a year. So, uh, to get involved uh, as an independent yourself, is there any correlation between working with the group? Or yeah, I'd say so. We share a lot of common interests. Yeah. You know, I mean, no matter what group it may be, I would share those same interests. Yeah. It's just that uh, you guys are focused a lot on EVPs, and I like that as well. Yeah. I definitely like you know anything to do with that side, and then of course ITC work. Yeah. Like between me and you, like we're, we're working together to try and get some new equipment. Uh, a lot of that equipment is not available in Canada. Yes. So we're actually having to send off to yeah. the states and get a states address, and then boogie yeah. it back to our place. Yeah. Uh, is, does that annoy you in any way, shape, or form? Like. Uh, well, it's certainly a hindrance. Uh, you know, it'd be nice to see guys like Bill Chappell realize that he's not just having an American uh, market, he's got a market worldwide because yeah. he's all over on the internet. And uh, I mean, he's a brilliant guy in what he does, and uh, I love the technologies he's working with. I mean, there's a few other guys like Gary Gawk and some of these other guys, but you know, they're definitely at the forefront of uh, paranormal uh, technology equipment for sensing for the ghost hunters and so on. Yeah, yeah. Um, pretty much in, uh, in the same bag as you. Like, it, even though we both use a lot of old school uh, techniques, yeah, we still use technology to the yeah, max. We, yeah, we have to rely too. I kind of like to balance technology and some of the stuff from the past. Yeah.